truth is a two-tiered thing, right? We're all looking for the truth, the truth of who we are, where we come from, what this is, where are we, how does this work, why is this happening? We're all looking for this truth and we all have our own versions of the truth. Some of them align slightly, some of them are slightly different, some of our perspectives, but ultimately everyone has their own individual and unique perspective on the truth. Now, there are two types of truth. There is objective truth and there is subjective truth. Objective truth is the truth no matter what. It is a fundamental truth. An objective truth is I'm here speaking to you. That is an objective truth. There is no debate about that. We don't need to argue about whether I'm here or not. I'm here. You can see me. You can hear me. Fact. The earth is a place we live in. Objective truth. Right? Um, the earth is a place where we experience things. What we call life. Objective truth. There's no debate about that. The earth is a place where we learn things at different levels. Objective truth. There's no debate about that. We're constantly learning physically and metaphysically from the day you are incarnated into this realm. Uh, we have a desire to want to share as human beings. No human being wants to be alone. That is an objective truth. It is encoded within our genetic makeup, spiritually and physically. Um, every human being must grow. Objective truth. There's no debate about that. You're always going to grow physically and spiritually. And every human being must move on from one state to another what we call death. Objective truth, no debate. Everything else in between is a subjective truth. So when you start asking questions like, okay, what are we here to learn or experience? That is the subject matter. We could debate that for a billion years and never come to consensus because it's subject matter. It is, I want to say, irrelevant in the grand scheme of things. <clears throat> okay. So I want to just separate those two things, objective truth and subjective truth. Now, personally, I've kind of moved away from subjective truth. It served its purpose for me personally. And the, the reason we have subjective truth is because subjective truths help us to better understand concepts they help us to heal from trauma. They help us to, uh, um, yeah, those two things, understand and understand concepts and to heal. That is what subject matter is. Once you've healed to a certain degree within a certain time and space, once you've healed, once you've reached a certain stage of growth, you outgrow your subject matter. You now see objective truth. And that is the truth that you focus in on. And that is what an ascended master really does, or a saint. is someone who's able to see objective truth and build on the objective truth. That is the difference between a truther and a conspiracy theorist. Mm. A conspiracy theorist focuses on the subject matter. Oh, my model, the cosmic egg, this is where this is, that goes there, that goes there, this is this, subject matter. That is the conspiracy theorist. The truther says, we're in something, and this something has got levels to it. It's got levels. And right now, we're in a certain level, and we are shifting from one level to another. And I would like to go to the next level. That is the objective matter. I'm no longer interested in arguing over the subject matter. Where exactly is that? Where, how exactly does that work? It doesn't matter. It does not matter. And I say that in all senses of that term. It doesn't. What matters is, I know I am a living being. I have an experience. I'm experiencing life, what we call life, a reality. I'm learning things every day about myself. I am growing. I am sharing. I have this desire 
and this need to want to share what I'm learning, what I'm experiencing. I'm growing and I now know that I'm going to move on to something else. I want to move on to the next stage of this game. Wherever that stage is. So there's this immense, there's this true like acceptance of that. Um, and you're settled into that. And that is the journey. And you've gotten to a point of true ascension because what you just described to me is what ascension pretty much is and what it looks like and what it feels like. Um, and you've gotten rid of the details. You've gotten rid of the subject matter and you're just at this point being, and you've grown to accept what being means. And that's the truth. That was beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. I'm just going to plug in one last thing before I go. Um, um, when we talk about perspectives and truths and you say, well, let's share versions of truth. There is no wrong or right truth. There is no such thing. It is impossible to have a wrong or right perspective because every perspective has got an element of truth and an element of deception to it. Because if you knew the full objective truth, we wouldn't be here. You would, you would explode. You'd, you'd, you'd go back to source because you've figured it out. So that is impossible. There has to be an element of truth with every perspective, but also an element of deception to keep the game exciting. Now I'm going to give you a good example to illustrate my point. Right now at this point, Point. If we asked someone in Asia, in India, someone in China, someone in Africa, someone in America, someone in Europe, someone in South America, and we said to all these different people, get a piece of paper and write out a page of what life on earth is like right now. Explain what, what earth is. What is earth and what is, what is it to be human? What is it to be? to live like on earth in 2020, explain in your own terms the truth about life on earth in 2020. Once you've all written that down, bear it, dig a hole, bear it in the hole and leave it. Let's fast forward in time, a thousand years from now, right? Let's go back and unearth those letters that were written in 2020, a thousand years ago, about life on earth. If we read those five letters from people who existed in the same space and time, you would not believe it. You would say it's impossible. These people were not alive at the same time because their versions of reality are completely different. They're describing a completely polarized version of reality. I can see there's some threads of commonality, but generally these people could be living thousands of years apart from each other. And that is the nature of truth. Mm -hmm. Two truths. See what you did Two there. <laughs> but it's interesting because the details or the subject matter are the steps. Yes. So there's a time and a place, you know? until you reach the top of that mountain and you're like, okay, I see that none of it really mattered, but I needed it. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. It's there as a- That's as balanced it's, it's there as to heal us. Right <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> balance as yeah. you get, you know, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm sandwiched between greatness. So, you know, <laughs> I wanted to, um, First of all, I'll just stay as much on to objective truth as possible <laughs> and and um, and really just, you know, first just lend the awareness, you know, once, I, once we even start talking, we're already playing the game, like with English, especially. Um, and so many of the expressions that we're using, even when we say creation, real, these kind of things process one way for the consciousness, but actually do really mean something totally different. And we've also we've uncovered that but it's almost like something that constantly slips our memory about just the inferiority of language to express existence and i love what martin said yeah if you go back everybody's viewpoint and perspective is going to be totally different but as we move also into the objective knowledge 
this means that we would find truths that existed on all stages for those that were, were looking for that let's say like a blueprint to where you find this same thing in a small insect you find this in a company you find this uh, uh, in, in a prayer or way of life that works and it, it just gives us these bearings to you know where we really are and, and I think that in, in existence there's that's the reason why we're, we're trying to figure things out is we're actually trying to figure out our position or like our role in this or 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 uh, basically to create what we would say is is an ID a purpose and then as the masters say it gets flushed down the toilet basically or into the uh, the drain of the center of the cosmos or the sand painting just gets all messed up and then now you know it's time to begin again said to shine your light so shine on all of them